welcome to the Sitecore Architecture and Scaling Overview video series. During this series, we'll dive into the architecture of the Sitecore platform and investigate specific business processes to describe the logical entities in the architecture, data flow, and scaling options. The Sitecore 9 series consists of three major products, the Sitecore Experience Manager, the Sitecore Experience Platform, and finally, Sitecore Experience Commerce. Each of the Sitecore products offers a range of business processes, and during the series, we'll dive into a number of the most important processes to describe how data flows between the logical entities in the system and how data is stored. Based on this information, we'll also show you examples of scaling based on business scenarios. The Sitecore products are increasingly based on a microservice architecture, where there are specific services targeting specific business requirements and processes. The architecture provides possibilities to scale your Sitecore solution to the needs of the business. Each of the services in the Sitecore architecture can implement a number of logical roles or entities spanning across four groups. The storage roles stores the data of the Sitecore platform. This could, for example, be content or media or customer information. These roles are typically databases, but can also be more transient storage providers, for example, in-memory data stores. The data in these roles are stored either permanently or temporarily, for example, when there are data waiting for processing. Application roles hosts the business logic of the system. These can be split into two subdivisions. Firstly, web roles, which deliver output to visitors or administrators or to calling applications. In other words, websites or web services with API endpoints. Secondly, worker roles, which awaits data changes in the storage roles and executes business logic to transform and or transfer the data to other storage roles or indexes. The purpose of the indexes are to optimize the finding of relevant data using queries. The indexes are maintained and used by the application roles and typically catalogs the data stored in the storage roles. Lastly are cloud services, which are services hosted by Sitecore in the cloud and are accessed by the application roles. The Sitecore cloud services are not technically part of the product architectures, but are software as a service offerings available through the licensing of the products or on separate subscriptions. Each of the Sitecore product contains a number of logical entities across these types, which together with a number of cloud services forms the entire functionality of the Sitecore platform. The logical breakdown of entities across the Sitecore platform should make it possible for you to, de to easier determine which roles to focus on for your specific business needs. Also, the entities cover a wide range of business processes and throughout the series, series we'll go through uh, some of these scenarios to visit the specific roles and to describe data flows and options for scaling and configuring. However, it's worth noting that the Sitecore architecture caters for many business and scaling scenarios, so it's highly recommended to study the documentation for scaling and hosting options. Although the number of roles in this overview might look daunting, it's important to understand that the roles depicted here are logical, not physical, and they, der they therefore uh, do not represent, for example, physical or virtual servers database servers, search engines, or other resources. For example, in a developer scenario, all the indexes, application, and storage roles can actually fit onto a single developer machine. This makes it simple to develop and debug, for example, Sitecore websites or your extensions to the Sitecore products themselves. Through the Sitecore installation framework or the Sitecore ARM templates, it is possible to install a subset of the product portfolio, for example, the Sitecore Experience Manager product. Or 
the entire Sitecore Experience platform, including the XConnect and Experience database roles. And finally, Sitecore Experience Commerce, including the entire product range, Sitecore Experience Manager and Sitecore Experience Platform. Now in a more business related scenario, for example, when testing your solution, databases and indexes are typically scaled out to separate database or search engines. And in a production environment, specific application roles or databases are moved to separate servers to cater for business scenarios such as high traffic, order processing, email dispatching, security, compliance, and so on. Flexibility in the Sitecore architecture can also be achieved by moving to the Sitecore Azure platform as a service, which means that scalability and reliability is handled by the Microsoft Cloud capabilities. This, for example, makes it much easier to support highly scaled geographical setups where specific roles are hosted across multiple uh, locations. Now to summarize, the Sitecore architecture is designed to scale the application to cover a wide variety of business requirements across the features provided by the Sitecore Experience Manager, the Sitecore Experience Platform, and the Sitecore Experience Commerce products. In the following parts of the video series, we'll examine the architecture of the Sitecore platform closer to describe the logical entities in the architecture, the data flow between the entities, and provide examples of the scalability of the platform.